This week on Erotic Awakening, why can't Dan swing, stress and kink, and rope cast? Welcome to Erotic Awakening, an exploration of all things erotic. If you are offended by adult topics or prohibited by law, we recommend you stop listening right now. We want to thank all of our patron supporters. Absolutely. Can't do this without them. Head over to patreon.com slash erotic awakening today and get your bonus content and support the show. Hi, Don. Hi, Dan. So recently, you and I went to a party here in the Pennsylvania area. We did. And it was a swing party, which is not our normal thing, but we brought along our BDSM toys. But we really weren't there to do BDSM. We were there because it was a swing party. Right. And we have tried this every now and then it was a house party mm-hmm. yep. right it's probably been two years it's been a year and a half since our last one mm-hmm. that we attempted to go to down in arizona oh we actually went to and uh, yes we, we did we did that yes, is yes. true and then my brain started clicking when was the one before that i have no fucking clue yeah <laughs> you and i started and, and there's a point to this oh podcast listeners <laughs> when we very first started delving into the anything alternative naughty? section. Yeah, anything naughty. <laughs> anything naughty. <laughs> I think going to a swing club was one of the very first things that we did. And I certainly remember going to a swing party way back then. Yes. And the short version of it is that you and I keep trying and it just doesn't work out. So we keep attending. We keep attending. <laughs> And I wanted to explore a little bit of that from my own personal perspective. And actually, Dawn, what I wanted to do was to determine and see if I can figure out why I am not a successful swinger. Okay. Well, I I got some questions for you first. Go ahead, doctor. Okay. Okay. So what is our usual thing when we go to a swing club? How many people have we hooked up with? Gone to a swing club and hooked up with strangers strangers not met someone for dinner and then took them to a swing club so that we could hook up right because we have done that yeah because swing clubs are cheaper than hotel rooms i i remember i took this one girl to a swing club and it really worked out well we ended up buying a house with her and that's what i was going with for six years so um and and i took her partner and right we had some fun dates but that's all you know that's all that went but But, to actually go to a swing club and hook up with someone that's not in you no never never. me either Uh, i take that back twice yes for me (laughs) twice yep so once was at Cupid's uh-huh. and the guy said, hey, I want to do this thing to you. And I negotiated that thing. And then he said, wait, now I want it in return. And I said, no, that's not what we negotiated. So that kind of pissed him off. The other one was in Indiana mm-hmm. when I went with a friend. So we haven't hooked up with anybody in 20 some years. Okay. Right. And we've done a couple of attempts. So why, Dan, why do you think you are bad at swinging? Is well, how I'm, I'm going to phrase it. I'm not going to so, phrase it that way. Okay. Although maybe I should. Now, as you said a moment ago, and let's be very clear, this is not an anti-swinging anything. Absolutely if, not. If anything, I am expressing envy. We went to a nice party on Saturday. Yes. It was a nice place. Everybody was was super nice. And we had some great conversations with people. By the way, if this particular person that I was talking to that I showed the list to is listening, I apologize. We left without me even saying goodbye. And I have actually been really thinking about that for a couple of days now. And I hope that they do get that message. Point being is why, I I mean, I like sex Mm -hmm. and I like going places where people are sex positive. And and I'm just going to just reflect a little bit here. My perception of myself is that I dressed to impress. You take a shower, you dress in clean clothes. You look like, you know, you're very approachable. You look like you're there to have fun. Check, check, check. I had all those covered. The the theme was leather and lace. I I wore my leather vest. I wore my lace. And I I think Mm -hmm. both of us looked really hot. Mm -hmm. And not only did we have some nice conversations, but I genuinely without trying too much, generated interest Mm -hmm. with at least one person. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The rest of the story, as we're sitting there talking to people more than once, and I'm thinking of one person particularly who disappeared 
in the midst of our conversation, and not, not in a rude way, we weren't talking to them, but they would disappear. They would go have sex in one of the rooms. They would come back out. And then they would go have sex in another room and come back out. So there was plenty of sex happening. We walked around a couple of times. We saw plenty of sex mm -hmm. happening, right? It was yep. absolutely a sex positive environment. And there's just something about this that I could not get interested or to the point of wanting to join in, to the point of saying to somebody, hey, let's go have sex. And even when it was offered to me, I ended up not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So why is that, doctor? I, I don't know, because I was going to add in my two cents worth of I absolutely am positive two people were interested in me. Mm -hmm. And then they followed me around like puppy dogs. And I, I just in case they're listening, <laughs> it's not a bad thing, right? I'm just reflecting that I absolutely could have just said, hey, let's go. And it would have happened. Mm -hmm. And I didn't follow through with that. You and I ended up having hot fucking sex in well, front of people. Fair. And that was awesome. But I'm more of an exhibitionist than a voyeur. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's part of mine. But I don't know that I can answer your question because I don't know mine. Except that one of the people that I was actually interested in had reached out to me on FET beforehand and we'd already had 24 hours of conversation mm -hmm. so when we get to the party i spot him and i'm able to go say hey i know your name because you gave it to me mm -hmm. this is me right and then boom that just started the conversation right there and i was more interested in that person because we already knew a little bit about each other so is it because we don't know people well and we need to know people before we have sex with them all right so that's theory number one is that we like to build some kind of a relationship with the person prior is it prior to having sex with them or sub theory number one a is prior to sex even being on the table right and so that's one of my theories now that you've said something is that we like the the progress of i've met you I've yeah. developed some kind of, you know, I'm not, we're not falling in love with people, but we've developed some chemistry yes, and now like we want to push the chemistry along. And I like to act on the chemistry. And so, you know, I can throw words out there like I'm demisexual. I need to build a connection with someone before having sex with them. I'm sapiosexual. I like to have a head conversation with them to see how they think before I even start building a chemistry with them. Sometimes, I mean, I love sex, right? With the right person, I absolutely love sex. But I have to throw in there with the right person. I, if I don't, mm, man, that is so hard. So how do I explain sometimes when I get tingles and I don't know the person? Fair. I don't act on those either. So, that, so, so what else you got? I All feel right. like you've been chewing on this for days. So what else you got? Theory number two, it is too casual. And what I mean by that is, again, this is not to suggest that it is right, wrong, bad, good, anything like that. But for us, I so there was a point where we were in one of the rooms and I was doing things to you. Mm -hmm. And somebody <laughs> just came into the room not to watch, which was one of the policies of that particular swing party is that all doors stayed open so people could watch. But he just had something on the table. He said, oh, excuse me, I just have to go get my hat. And he got his hat and he left again. And then somebody else said, oh, I've got my shoes and came in. They got their shoes and left again. And someone else came in and said, hey, I'm leaving for the night. It was great meeting yeah. you while I'm bent over the bed. Yes. And then shook your hand. And I looked back and he reached out and shook my hand. Right. <laughs> so not that it's bad. I mean, it was oh, no, the no. energy was fine, but it was just very different than what we're used to exactly very different and i wonder if it is part so my theory number two is the casualness of it is off putting for some reason um which leads me into theory number three you and i when it comes to percentage of time spent in swing land you know maybe less than one percent and 99 point something percent in bdsm land yes that is true and although, as we have a conversation, either BDSM or land or poly land, 
right? Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation with somebody where the consent rules at a BDSM event are very prevalent, and it's the first thing people talk about. We have classes. We teach classes how to negotiate properly, how to avoid getting a bad reputation for not sticking to whatever your agreement with the person is. And then at a swing party, it's a little different. At least in our experience. Yes. And, and well, here's an, gonna here's an example from okay. last night or from that the night that we went just a couple nights ago. There was a couple in the bed having sex and somebody walked up and went to go stroke the woman and got a simple nod of acknowledgement that it was okay from one of the participants. I, I don't know which one. Mm hmm. And boom, okay, now he's engaged in the scene as well. That's a very different animal than the BDSM lifestyle, right? That how you engage with people, the level of negotiation. I'm not going to say the level of consent because both swinging and BDSM both need and require consent. Mm -hmm. And if you do not practice consent, both of them are going to kick you out. Right. But how you practice that consent and how you negotiate are so darn different. I still find, and I found myself at the party, somebody came over and I was talking to them and I casually put my arm around them as I was talking, totally appropriate in swing land. But in my head, I was like, oh my God, dude, you can't do that. You've just made, un you've just made contact with someone. Well, I was talking, so we were in the kitchen and we were, we are, were talking to a whole group of people, right? Mm -hmm. You know, interacting with a whole group of people. And then someone put their arm around me and all they were doing was moving me aside a little bit because their Coke was on the other side of me. Mm -hmm. So they were just touching me to like warn me that they were coming in behind me to get their Coke off the counter. And my first response, my, my first and our response was, who the fuck is touching my body without asking me first? Right. And then I looked, and it was a woman just grabbing her Coke. And I'm like, Dawn, chill the fuck out. <laughs> right? It is very casual. They don't think anything of that because they're not doing anything. They're not doing anything wrong. This is the environment. This right. is exactly. the environment. In a house swing party, I took a breath, right? In the old days, I... the have. That, I have spoken up about right. that for someone not to touch me. This one, I, I we've spent enough time in and in and out that I was able to just take that breath and go, this is the way it is at a yep. swing party. It's not like she grabbed my boob. She was just right. putting her hand on me to so I wouldn't step back into her. In the kink world, man, we just don't do that at least in the events that we've been to i wouldn't even put my hand on someone's knee or something but at the mm -hmm. swing club that's kind of sexy i don't know how to work with that kind of energy anymore right yeah the yeah. flirting flirting at a kink event versus flirting at a swing event it's so foreign to me that i don't know how to do it at a swing event and i don't know see that's one of the really interesting things and this goes I'm sure it's one in one of my theories is I hadn't noticed, and this might be our perception. Is there any flirting at a swing event? Because why bother? Oh, there was flirting. Okay. There was flirting. There was people that were, there were some that were awkward that were trying to figure out how to flirt. Mm -hmm. Like the one that was really awkward with me. Mm -hmm. He actually introduced himself a second time saying, I know I'm introducing myself a second time. And then went to shake my hand and I shook his hand and he kissed my hand. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to flirting. flirt and figure it out. And I, some of the women were flirting a little bit as they were coming in and touching hands while they were talking to the guys. But I don't know that that's Flirting, per and it may well be flirting. It might be just casual contact. Oh, because... see, I see casual contact as flirting because I'm from the kink world. But <laughs> is there any point in flirting at a swing party versus simply going up to somebody, you know, that seems somewhat interested and said, hey, let's do it. Let's go fuck. See, and I don't know how to do that and don't know that I'm interested in doing that. Well, we'll come back to whether we're, why, why, we're not just on the theories for the moment. Just on the theories. Okay. So right. do you have any more theories? Yes. Are we? Theory okay. number four yes. is, do we carry, and uh, this is one that takes a little reflection, but do we carry some kind of judgment about people 
that engage in sex so easily? Ooh, I'd have to look at that one mm -hmm. because I would like to think I'm open-minded and that I'm very sex positive. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think I would have a judgment about that. But I would like to think I, I would have, not have a judgment. I would about have that. to look at that. And but like you said at the beginning, I think my judgment, mm, I would like to think my judgment leans towards the envious. Yeah. And, and that's that's I, again, I don't know. The the reflection is I get the thinking. You and I teach a lot about sacred sexuality. Mm -hmm. I have had a low number of sexual partners compared to how many sexual partners I could have. <laughs> and I wanted to, to respond with that. Yes. And everybody you fuck, you end up in a relationship with. You're a poly, dear, not a swinger. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it feels like you would like to embrace swinging a little bit just for the experience. Absolutely. But one of the things that we'll look at is do we have some kind of an unconscious bias? I'll have to look at that. Yeah. But I think when we get digging into it deep enough to realize nope nope that's just envy but we'll see yeah right but if, but for me it, it's envy but i also don't know that i'm wrapped up in fixing it does that make sense well we're not there yet okay we'll all get right. to the why right. and then one more yes the theory and this has to do more with you than me Okay. And I asked this on FetLife not long ago, and everybody who responded said, nope, nope, that's not the way it is. But I wonder if self-confident females or female-appearing humans are less likely to get action at Swingland. You think women are less likely? To if they are self-confident. If they are self-confident. Okay, throw that one at me again, because I feel like I am self-confident at this point in my life, which means I don't get a lot of kink action as a self-confident bottom. Mm -hmm. As a self-confident, I walked into that swing club. Remember us walking into the swing party? Mm -hmm. And we're like, yes. We're powerful. We're confident. Yes. We're going to go in and have a fabulous time. Went in and had a fabulous time. Absolutely. I felt like I was absolutely confident. And I felt like all I had to do was pull the trigger. And I know of at least two people that absolutely. would have gone with me. So does that mean I okay. get less? No, then you, then my theory is not, that is not a valid theory then. Because you are quite correct. You did have people interested, regardless of how self-confident you were. I got to thinking that if a, if you picture one of the people at the swing club, let's say not necessarily either anybody that we had any great involvement with, right? Just pick a random person. Mm -hmm. And if you picture two people, two women people, one of them being a shy, reserved sort of person and the other person being more confident and talkative and, you know, those are your two people. Which one would that person, that male bodied person be drawn they to? They gravitate in swing land, it seems they gravitate towards the more extroverted person. Okay. So, yeah, it, 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 at least that seems to be my, my visual thought mm -hmm. at the moment. So, as, as the shy person, I don't ever remember anybody being interested man you know what i gotta rethink all this shit but as the shy person no nah, i still had to step up and be the confident person to get those to happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so well according to fet life the five people that responded to my question they all said self-confidence is the way to go yeah which is fantastic because we've been teaching self-confidence and sexy for years absolutely, absolutely. i went in all self-confident and yep could have picked and then chose not to so i would like to know why Dr. Dan, I didn't choose to. So that's where we get to the interesting bit, right? So theories aside, if we, and I'm, I'm like you, I've actually gotten to the point where I'm interested, I'm curious, mm -hmm. but I'm not worried about it. Yeah. What yeah. I do plan to do is because we had a great time and of the two swing parties we've been to in the last two years, I had a great time at this one we just went to. Mm -hmm. I did not have a bad time at the other one. But the other one, I was a little more off center, but it was more of an exploratory 
Yeah, thing. and they were two different environments. Absolutely, two, two different, different environments. environments. So two house parties, two different regions, two different yep. environments. And we're here chewing on our experience mm -hmm. of what we just did a couple of nights ago. But I do want to throw out there and make sure it's heard because you just said it. We had a fabulous time. Oh, absolutely. We didn't fuck sure. anybody else. Bud had a fabulous time, and so I'm not saying anything bad about it at all. If we were going to stay in this area, I would go back to that absolutely. those people's house party. And see, and that's a thing. If I went back to that house party, now that I've met five, six, seven of the guys and you know some of the women, maybe the next time I would talk a little bit more, mm -hmm. and then maybe the zingles would start. Right, right, because that's kind of the way I'm built. I don't even like to flirt until I know someone well, and that's so bass backwards. Yep, bass backwards. Ass backwards. I kind of like bass backwards. <laughs> I did speak to a person who has a ton of swinging experience. Okay. And what she told me is that that is the case, that most of the time, these people do know each other, mm -hmm. that you, you're not just randomly, you're just showing up for a random hookup. The person that came in and out of our conversation because she was going off to fuck people, guarantee you, she knew them and this was their time to get together. And that's when the dance card became yeah. empty. I, I will tell you, um, I just, again, every time we're getting ready to go to a swing party, I'm jumping on the internet researching the, oh, oh just to be blunt, I research the STI transmission rate for oral sex. Because mm -hmm. I get it, y'all wearing condoms. And some people choose not to wear condoms. That's cool, but I can avoid them. Matter of fact, that's one of my things. If I was going to engage with somebody, you know, to say, what do you think about condoms? And unless they say, fuck yes, then I'd be like, I don't know. Right. But that's right. my that's my risk profile. Y'all do your own risk profile. And we have our poly risk profile as well, Absolutely. which involves other people. Yeah. But there's a lot of oral sex going on too. And that just feels a little above Risky. my risk profile. Above my risk Fair profile. Fair enough. Yep. So there you go. There you go. What'd you figure out? I don't need to figure anything <laughs> out. I think it's enough. <laughs> Different strokes for different folks. And by the way, we can flip this. And if we were swingers that went to a BDSM party, mm. they might have the same conversation. They're like, I don't understand. I don't, it doesn't do it for me. I appreciate what y'all are doing. I like hanging out with y'all, but I don't dig, you know, why would anybody want and to put needles through their tips? And why can't I casually touch someone on the shoulder Absolutely. or the elbow or the knee or whatever? It's not like it's even a sexual touch. So what's the big deal? And it's very much like the story that you told at the party that we went to. If you have some kind of a place where there's one table full of poly people and one table for, full of kinksters and one table for, full of swingers, what do they say when they look at each other? Man, what you guys do is just unsafe or, or something or like weird, that or least. weird or yeah. I couldn't do now, that. Now there are people that cross. Absolutely. And we'll keep trying. I like meeting people that are that are sex positive and sure. open and I can go walk around. I was wearing my lingerie with my little lacy cover and had my my green eyeliner on and yeah. I was feeling hot I and was, naughty. I was feeling pretty <laughs> good myself and I was comfortable you always hear this on people. They say, oh, I feel like I'm going to be too young. I'm too old. I'm too thin. I'm too fat. I'm too this. I'm too that. Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful cross section of people that were there. Mm -hmm. And by the way, a heck of a lot more representation of people of color than at kink parties we go to. Yes. Which was really interesting and nice to see. So absolutely. There you go. There's Dan and Dawn go to a swing club. And don't swing know party. why we Dan and Dawn go to that's what we should title this. Dan and Dawn go to a swing party and fuck each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're in charge of that part, so you can title it whatever you want. Hey, that's date night, man. That was that was an awesome date night, though. But that was an awesome date night. <laughs> we might Dawn, I might go to swing parties in a variety of places like Toronto. Oh, you lost me. <laughs> Where did I go? Oh, Toronto, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Chicago, Michigan, Kansas City, Las Vegas, and Minnesota. You can keep up with all of our shenanigans and where we will be in person, either to attend a swing party with us or just have a cup of coffee. Fabulous. And you can find all of this on the Erotic Awakening newsletter and get your EA shout out like Trudell in New York and Vicky from West Virginia. So head over to eroticawakening.com and subscribe today. We may have to add a few more places onto those locations. We are currently talking to some other people 
and may have something set up for this summer. And we have a couple virtual ones that are not even on this list that we've got coming up as well. True. Plus all the classes I teach. Oh, my God. I got two this week that I'm teaching. You know what? Yes. Tell you what I'm going to do. Oh. Just so happens I've come across a couple of tickets for one of the virtual cons that we're going to. Mm -hmm. The next person to sign up on our patron, because I've already offered it to the existing patrons and they got what they wanted. The next person to sign up, you're going to get some virtual tickets to a virtual event in November. Our next patron that signs up. Fabulous. That sounds amazing. I like that idea. We love giving stuff to our patrons. We do so indeed. They support us. They make this happen. And we like to support them. Do you know, here's my segue. Do you know how I supported one of our patrons recently? How's that? They wrote on our Discord and said, Hey, I've been listening to Great Answers Ropecast from like 2015, and it's really weird because the Erotic Awakening intro is on the beginning of every one of those that I've heard, which is when he was part of our network, mm -hmm. right? And they're like, but I can't find anything before 2015. So I went out and did some research, and I found an archive because cast isn't being recorded anymore. So I went out and found the archive and gave them a link on helping them out there. But while I was doing that, I came across one of the rope cast from 2008 where Great Dancer interviews us. Mm -hmm. And he's interviewing us about Kaddishti and sacred sexuality and all this type of stuff. And at the end of that interview, you, you ask him, you're like, so how hard is it to start a podcast? And he's answering a little bit of that. So that is from October 1st, 2008. We started Erotic Awakening February 13th of 2009. Yes. So like four months later, we've got the Erotic Awakening podcast going. For those of you who are not familiar, Ropecast was a podcast focused on all kinds of things, rope bondage, but related topics as well. Oh, yeah. He talks about consent and all kinds of yep. stuff. Hosted by a guy named... Grey Dancer ran yes. from 2005 mm -hmm. to 2018. Yeah. So that's that's amazing. Yep. And I was looking through the archives. There are really some great, great interviews on there and all kinds of stuff. So fabulous. Yeah. Ropecast is one of those kink podcasts. I mean, right at the very beginning of things, that one, as well as back in 2005, Polyamory Weekly yes. started as well. Now, um, I think she started because he started. So she did the one on polyamory where his was on kink. Yeah. Now, according to old, this search I'm doing, Polyamory Weekly still exists, but I, I haven't seen an update. No, we were actually the last people she interviewed. And then she went on vacation and I haven't seen one since. And that's a couple of years back. That is the case. So is it? Is it yep, us? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We were the last one. Poly change management back in 21. Yep. Which is so weird to say. Back in 21, that was so long ago. <laughs> so there you go, Dawn. Apparently, we had a question of the day to wrap this thing up. We do. So, And I threw it out on our Discord so that people could answer it there. But it was brought up in my OWL meeting, mm -hmm. which is the Older Women in Alternative Lifestyles. And the question is, does stress ever lead you to losing interest in kink? If so, how do you get back on track? Well, I will say, and, and we did, I believe we've had some people on Discord already start a conversation around this. Yes. I can absolutely see where depression would and does impact your desire to do anything, mm -hmm. right? So that's absolutely would be kink. Um, so some people said that they weren't sure about stress getting in the way of their interest in kink, but absolutely depression, mm -hmm. like you said. And that's two different things, and that's a great call. Right. Low T, low testosterone, shifting hormones. We talk about menopause and stuff like that a lot on the older women's group. So shifting of hormones can absolutely affect that. The person that brought it up has a lot of medical stress. Mm -hmm. So that's sure, like that's getting in the way of their absolute. interest. So that can absolutely do that. And then someone else on Discord said, oh, wait, when I'm stressed, that's when I want kink. Mm -hmm. I need to beat it out of someone and that takes away my stress. Yep. Or like me, when I'm stressed out or a little low, I like maintenance spankings. Yep. I like a cathartic scene. So, you know, have we heard of stress getting in the way of and people losing interest in kink? Absolutely. People react to stress differently. For some of us, kink is our life. We will circle around 
and get interested in it again, yep. right? So whether we do something about it to make that happen, whether we just wait it out. Sometimes I've just waited it out knowing it's going to cycle back around because it's my passion. It's mm -hmm. my, it's, it's how I get turned on. Kink is how I get sexually turned on, <gasps> which could be the other thing in the swing thing. Man, that, why, how come we didn't come up with that? I kink and power exchange is what turns me on. If I'm the one that has to be confident and in charge and pulling someone into the bedroom, I've already lost interest because I'm in charge. And there's my solution as well. My answer is I really dig the vulnerability, right? And if somebody's just giving me things on a on a silver plate and saying, here, here's my physical thing on a silver plate, that doesn't feel vulnerable to me. Right. Hmm. Mm. Damn, we could. All right, go that's drop out the first we, 20 minutes of the podcast. That's why we like kink and power exchange and because I like to be vulnerable, but that is created through power exchange and kink. And Anyway, going back to that question of the day, if you're <laughs> yes, interested sir. in that, feel free to jump over to Discord and tell us what you think. Absolutely. So I, I haven't gotten a lot of tentacles, but W. Socrates sent me some tentacle dice. I may need to buy these tentacle dice. <laughs> Not that we do many dice games anymore now that we're on the road. We did find a board game place. We did. And played some Terraforming Mars. That I, was fun. I didn't think you were going to mention that after the whooping I gave you. You whooped uh -huh. my ass. Whooped my ass. <laughs> Be part of the Erotic Awakening podcast community. You can support us on Patreon and get early access to the podcast, a free version of the audio book, Polyamory Toolkit, free ebooks, member only Discord access, and more. Find all the goodies at patreon.com slash erotic awakening today. Help others find us. Take a moment to support the podcast. Rate us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Or just tell your friends. Join the conversation with us and other listeners. Use the links from the Erotic Awakening website for our growing Discord channel. Feel free to reach out to us. Contact us with questions, podcast comments, or just to say hi. We are Dane and Dawn on FetLife. And Erotic Awakening on Instagram. Or just email us, Dane and Dawn at eroticawakening.com. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dawn.